I want to talk to you about sacrifice. A sacrifice is essentially an exchange. When a sacrifice is done properly, nothing is lost. A sacrifice literally means to set aside, to put up, to make holy or sacred. Now, I want to talk to you about the concept of spiritual sacrifice. We all know that getting that promotion at work requires sacrifice, or saving up for that new car requires sacrifice. But how does a sacrifice for spiritual purposes work? I fasted for a year. For a year, I didn't eat any meat. For the first two months, actually, I didn't eat any cooked food, a completely raw diet. It was hard, and I can't really begin to tell you why I even made the choice in the first place. I was spiritually compelled. I just woke up one day and didn't eat meat for a year. I had super intense cravings for meat for a while that I had to fight off daily at first. I had never done anything like this before, and I did no research, which was a mistake because by the end of the year, I had lost a good bit of weight and wasn't feeling too great. I didn't know how to shop in a cost-effective manner, but it ended up being worth every penny in the end. During this entire process of fasting from meat, I became more spiritually inclined, more intuitive. I was also more empathetic. My dreams were more lucid, and I woke up feeling more refreshed. I had more physical and mental energy for the first nine to 10 months. I'm guessing I went through a total cleansing or detoxification of my body, which made things much more smooth in everyday life. That's the best way I could describe it anyway. I think that all of this, in large part was a result of developing some sort of self-discipline, which I've lacked my entire existence. Around nine months, I started to lose a little weight week by week, but I felt amazing, so I kept going. Around 11 months, I noticed a slight drop in my overall energy levels. My wife told me I was losing weight. I didn't believe her at first. When I looked in the mirror, I believed I looked great. But one day I woke up and had a little bit of trouble getting out of bed, and I couldn't ignore it anymore. Because of this newfound spiritual energy I had developed in my life, I was experiencing an increase in synchronistic events, or at least in my awareness of these events. I woke up, had trouble getting out of bed, and a random thought popped into my head. Maybe I should read a Bible. Maybe it wasn't so random. It was a week before Christmas, so perhaps I was just in that mood. Anyway, I responded to the thought like, yeah, maybe I will. I had the day off of work and decided I would listen and go get the Bible. I Google mapped a bookstore close and got in the car. When I arrived, no one was in the store, not even behind the cash register. I browsed the entirety of the small bookstore until I made my way to the shelves labeled Bibles. There were only a few to choose from. They were all cheap. The most expensive was a $10 King James Version with Jesus' words highlighted in red. And this is the one that attracted me the most and I decided it was the one for me. As soon as I decided, a man suddenly was behind the counter and greeting me as if I just walked into the store. I thought it was strange, but I shrugged it off. He was very outgoing and friendly, asking me what I liked to read, and he said he had things that he would like to show me. I politely declined, seeing as how I wasn't feeling too good these days. When I got to the counter, by smell, the man was obviously drunk, but it didn't bother me at all. What the heck? Why not? At least he's not out driving around. He sees the Bible and says, Oh man, is that what you came for? Yes, I replied. It's a shame we're even allowed to sell those. What do you mean, I asked the man. Never mind, he said. Why don't you just take that one off my hands? Consider it paid for. Not a problem, I responded, smiling. It felt like all of this was prearranged to happen for me. I thanked him genuinely and left. A week later, before bed, I decided to open the Bible to a random page and read a verse. It was Christmas Eve. I flipped it open and it landed somewhere in the New Testament with the highlighted red words of Jesus and my eyes were pulled to a certain verse. Jesus says, It is not what enters the mouth of a man that defiles him. It is what comes out of his heart. And I was shocked. Because I had been experiencing this physical deterioration, I had started to wonder if I should eat meat to supplement. But I've always been stubborn and headstrong, so I stuck it out in spite of it. But it was like Jesus just gave me personal permission to eat what I needed to eat in moderation as long as I kept an eye on what was in my heart. I was thankful for the sign. The next day, Christmas, I ended up at the in-laws. They were well aware I wasn't eating meat and were totally supportive after the first few rounds of questioning me about the sudden change in the beginning. I was out on the porch having a smoke and I could hear everyone inside. 
I heard my mother-in-law ask my wife if I wanted any honey-baked ham, which is actually my favorite. My wife told her, you know he hasn't eaten meat in a year? She said, ask him anyway. My wife came out and asked me, and you should have seen the look on her face when I said I would have some, but she didn't say anything about it and went back in. I ate two pieces of ham with my dinner, and I'm telling you the God's honest truth, that I got a buzz or something off of the meat. My eyesight got a bit blurry, and I was relaxed and satisfied almost to the point of euphoria. You might ask, what did I get out of that whole experience? Well, it didn't end there, but I'll tell you the summary of what happened. Well, I guess what happened is I ended up right here. But seriously, what happened was, because of this experience, I went through a total transformation of beliefs. I devoted a time of my life to Christianity, a short time, and it wasn't the first time I had been converted, and it probably won't be the last. I came out of a free-for-all type of spirituality that I couldn't really make sense out of and ended up blurring the lines between reality and fantasy. And then I entered into a very personally strict form of Christianity, a very structured form of spirituality, one that was made simple for me once I adapted all of my previous beliefs into where I was to take my Christian beliefs. Eventually, I left the church and continued on my personal inner journey, more balanced, embodying everything I had learned from the free-for-all, but applying some structure to it, which is where I begin this journey that you're taking with me now. What I learned about sacrifice from all of that was that I had somehow allowed my body to cloud my judgment. The body is always shouting out in want or protest. I had no self-discipline. My body is where I had centered my being or my awareness. Through this more intense form of sacrifice or fasting, I was able to weaken the body's hold on me to develop discipline, not just with my diet, but in a vast variety of ways. I had become some sort of living sacrifice. What came along with this sensation of the body weakening was an affected sense of motivation or will, lessened it, dulled the body, which allowed for the spirit to be more easily connected to and communicated with. This is how I was able to experience or become aware of these synchronicities that are happening all around me, to better see and read the signs that are placed before me, somehow for me to follow, to wherever it is that I'm headed now, being led by whoever it is that is leading in this current time and space. Life to me is truly magical. Until next time, I hope you continue to free your mind.